Welcome back to the kitchen. Today I'm making some bread. Uh, I'm just using, uh, for flour, we'll go through my ingredients here. I'm just using AP, all purpose gold metal flour. Uh, for yeast, you could use the, uh, the, the fleshmans that comes in these little uh, packets. And this is highly active. You can use this. This just makes it faster, basically. If you're in a hurry, this is what you use. I typically use Red Star. Red Star yeast, this is the one I typically use. I'm going to be doing six, starting with six cups of flour and like three cups of water. Well, we'll see. Six cups of flour, I'll put a cup and a half of water. We'll see what our consistency is. It depends, basically, your altitude and your water and your, how wet moist your flour is. I can't give you exact measurements on bread. It's really a by feel thing and by looks. Uh, the bread's got to be moist enough to form into a ball, but not so wet that it doesn't form into a nice ball. But what we'll do is I'll just show you as I go through. Where I'm going to start, I'm going to use, because I don't want to open this up just yet, I'll just use this today, because I've got to make a lot of bread pretty quick. I'm going to try to do six or eight loaves today, depending on how much time I have. And because this yeast is starting to get old, I want to use it up. So, we're just going to start with uh, some regular, this is highly active yeast that you can get at any store. So you can see I'm just putting it in right inside a cup here. Two full packets. Alright. Now this yeast, I always start my yeast with sugar. Some people don't start their yeast with sugar, but I tend to. Because the yeast needs something to eat. If the yeast doesn't have anything to eat, it's not going to form bubbles, which is what you want the yeast to do. So I add about a teaspoon to a tablespoon of sugar to that's two tablespoons of yeast. So, and then you need to add warm water. Can't be cold, can't be hot, it has to be warm. So add warm water to this. As you can see, I've got about two cups of water in two packages of yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. We'll let that proof. Now, in this pan. I'm just going to add water to this pan, and this is going to go in the bottom of my oven to keep my oven moist. I have a gas oven, so it already will be pretty moist in the oven, because gas is a, a, a moisture heat than, say, an electric oven. But I want it really wet in the oven when I'm baking my bread, so I get a really good crust. Uh, it's all about the crust for me. I want, I want a dense bread with good crust. So I'm going to fill this with water, put this in the oven, and preheat my oven to 350 right now. Now, now that I got my... Uh, my oven preheating. I'm gonna put in six uh, level scoops of flour. So there's six cups of flour. Now, if you don't have as large a kitchen aid as I do, you can cut this recipe in half and just half everything. Instead of using two packages of yeast, use one. Or instead of using two tablespoons of yeast, use one. Uh, just cut everything basically in half. I have a the largest KitchenAid they make, so I use I usually do a double batch, which is six cups. All right, now I'm going to add a tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon of uh, salt. All right, we'll just get this mixing a little bit, just to blend the salt and the and the flour. And I'm going to make rosemary bread, so I'm going to guesstimate a couple good tablespoons of rosemary in this bread. That was just dry rosemary. If you have fresh, I almost grabbed some of my mother yesterday out of her garden, but I forgot. So I'm using dry rosemary today. I got the flour blended. Our yeast is proofed. You can see there's lots of nice bubbles on top of the yeast. So our yeast has proofed. I don't feel any yeast particles or sugar particles in there, so the yeast is eating. You want to wait five more minutes. You know, you should wait at least five. If you want to wait five more to really get it bubbly, you can. Fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this two cups of water, six cups of flour, uh, and two tablespoons of yeast and a tablespoon of uh, sugar. And then we'll let that all blend and we'll see where we're at. As you can see, that's very dry. So I'm going to add another cup of water and I'm going to see where we're at, but I'm going to keep it on low.
Now you can see it's still dry, but it's getting really close. I mean, we're right at the, at the edge. So I'm going to add a quarter cup of water at a time and let it go until it forms into a rough ball. So as you can see, the last quarter cup I added made that rough ball. So I'm going to let this sit now for five minutes so the gluten can blend with the flour. I'll let it sit here just like this for five minutes. So this has been resting for five minutes. Now I need to knead it. I need mine on number right there. That's number three. And I'm going to knead that for five full minutes. So I just let this sit and let it knead for five minutes. And that really develops the gluten in the bread, uh, in the dough, so you make a nice bread. So I'm gonna let this go. It's gonna go crazy for five minutes and then I will show you basically what I do. So as you can see, it's been five minutes. This dough is really nice. Uh, it's come to a really nice uh, consistency at this point. So what I'm gonna do, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bowl, just throw some extra virgin olive oil, get the dough, here's the dough, and just turn it right off the hook, right into that olive oil, throw a little more olive oil on top, yeah I put a lot of olive oil, give it a good spin in the oil. Then I'm going to get a mopine, uh, sorry, got to get a tea towel, we call these mopines uh, in the Italian house, and just cover it up and I'm going to put it on top of my stove and it's warm there to proof for an hour. So that's it, it's all you're going to see for about an hour. I'm going to make some more batches, but I'm going to let this proof for an hour and an hour I'll show you. Hey guys, well if you want to see what the inside of the KitchenAid looks like, I took off the gear cover. What happened was when I was mixing, I shattered this bottom gear. Uh, the bottom gear got broken. Uh, this KitchenAid's 11 years old, but it, you know, I made bread with it over the last 11 years and done everything in the world with it, but it just shattered the bottom gear. So I'm gonna go online, see if I can find that gear and, re and order it and put it back together. Looks like all the other gears work pretty good. Here, I'll even start it up for you guys. Open? Yeah, you can start it open. So you can see. That gear is towed. So yeah, that gear got shattered when I was mixing. It's just a clip pin. I can pull this apart in like two minutes. I have all the tools to pull this apart the rest of the way. But I'm gonna see if I can go online, find the right gear, and put it back together. Uh, just as a disclaimer, I've made bread with this, like I said, for God knows how long. Uh, like I said, 11 years at least. It did die on me one time last year. It actually had a little problem with last year. Uh, it overheated. And there's a, on these KitchenAids, there's a uh, overheat function. If it overheats, it will automatically shut off and then, then you gotta work on it. But I had that fixed. And this part, I will just uh, simply buy the gear and do a quick fix myself. So I just wanted to show you, quick dope.